The following broadcast is released under a Creative Commons license. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. I believe He lived and died, and that He rose again. I believe and trust in Him. Ascended into hell, Christ our living head will one day come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe and trust in Him. I will trust in my Redeemer, sing of His love. That last forever Know His hope And sure salvation I will trust in Him Though the world Falls around me I rest And know That He has found me Christ the rock Is my foundation Welcome all to Pastor Yeshua. You've been listening to Creed by Richard Jensen from his album Order of Service. By way of introduction, Pastor is an acrostic which stands for Preaching All Salvation Through One Redeemer. Our Redeemer, Yeshua, Jesus is the Hebrew name for the Lord. It means Yahweh, the Lord, is salvation. Translated from Hebrew into the Greek language, the name Yeshua becomes Jesus. The English spelling for Jesus is Jesus. This program deals with apologetics, questions on and about God, the Bible, and the Christian faith. I take questions and seek by scripture to give answers and encouragement for everyone, including the tough-minded living in today's skeptical society. And now, let's join Pastor Yeshua. Welcome to Pastor Yeshua. In this episode, we will be discussing the issue, or perhaps I should say the allegation, which is so oft laid upon Christians from others who are either not Christians or who believe they are Christians but do not understand the term. The questions we will be asking are, 1. What is the biblical perspective on hate or judgment? And 2. Do or should Christians hate or judge? Or sometimes alternately lodged as an out-of-context axiom, quote, Judge not that you be not judged. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would quicken our hearts and our minds through your Holy Spirit to receive the message of your word. I pray that through this study your word would equip us to better understand and defend your word, which was once and for all delivered unto the saints. I pray that you would give us wisdom to discern between truth and error, and that we, like the Bereans, would search these matters out for ourselves, that we might confirm your word in all things. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. You may ask, why is this topic important? Well, if you've been around for any length of time, and particularly if you are a Christian, you have heard someone claim that you, or I, or Christians in general, quote, unquote, hate someone or some group of people. Generally, this claim comes when Christians engage others who are either secular Christians or non-Christian compared against God's word. This is largely because generally God's word presents answers, absolutes, black and white, truth, and authority. At the same time, man presents relativity, subjectivity, shades of gray, and tolerance. Why judgment? Well, while researching the issue of hate, quite frankly, it became very clear that the issue of discernment and judgment were unavoidably linked, even paired, if you will, together, because whether the issue is love or hate, one must use some source of truth or authority as a benchmark with which they determine 
Uh, do they love something or do they hate something? As a result of the common accusation of hate against Christians, many Christians have either given up whatever portions of theology which tend to confront or upset the world, or they have given up speaking altogether. But Christians are not called by the spirit of fear or of compromise. Instead, we are called by the spirit of the living God to speak the truth in love of God's word. One of the realities that many Christians have difficulty coming to terms with is that when Christians submit themselves to being used as the messenger of God's revelatory truth to the world, those hearing the word will be confronted by their own rebellion and sin. Some will repent, others will continue to rebel and experience anger and hatred against the messenger, the message, and ultimately against God himself. One way to deal with these emotions is for some to accuse the messenger of hate so as to avoid their own conviction and responsibility. While this result is unfortunate, it is not only expected, but predictable since we are told that there are some who will reject the message regardless of who the messenger is. But don't give up or give in. The Christian's honor and responsibility is still summarized by 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Quote, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. Unquote. This episode is presented in an effort to prepare and equip against the current particular allegation, misapplication, and misunderstanding of the issue of hate and judgment. There are several critical considerations which must be discussed regarding the topic of hate and judgment. The considerations are as follows. A. Source authority. B. Term definitions. C. The existence of hate without love. D. The necessity of sound judgment and or discernment. E. Failure to correctly assign motive and cause. Let's begin with the first. A. Source authority. Now I have covered the topic of source authority in uh, a previous episode, but for the sake of clarity, I will review it briefly again. There are ultimately only two sources for authority, man versus God. One, with man, if we take God and or the Bible out of the equation, and man is the sole source of authority, then every man is free to define terms as he or she sees fit. Words, ideas, definitions, morals, meaning, ethics beauty all become relative and subjective issues from individual to individual and there is no way to quote unquote know other than percentage and consensus who is right and who is wrong every idea and belief under the sun is open to interpretation based upon personal opinion personal feelings the culture the environment and a myriad of other possible filters two the other option is god if we accept and acknowledge God and his word, the Bible, as being the ultimate authority, then it is he who is defining terms, and our opinions, feelings, and emotions are in submission to his terms as given within his word, the Bible. B. The second task we have is to define the word hate, based upon the fact that there are two sources of authority, depending on which source we begin with, our ultimate understanding and definitions of hate and of love are diametrically different. In this case, there are two definitions of hate, a biblical definition versus a secular definition. Let's start with the first, number one, a secular definition. According to Wikipedia, hatred or hate is a deep and emotional extreme dislike that can be directed against individuals, entities, objects, or ideas. Hatred is often associated with feelings of anger and a disposition towards hostility. Commonly held moral rules such as the Golden Rule oppose universal hatred towards another. The article in Wikipedia goes on for four paragraphs to discuss the issue of hatred using concepts understood from various passages, believe it or not, from the Bible of all places, including a quote from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17 which says, Quote, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Unquote. Commenting on this verse, Wikipedia says, quote, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17 provides 
one illustration of how popular concepts of love and hate today have departed from biblical concepts. The verse says, quote, thou shalt not hate, unquote, but the rest of the verse explains what that means. Quote, thou shalt rebuke thy brother and not tolerate sin upon him, unquote. Today's culture often agrees, calling that, quote, unquote, tough love. While contemporary culture and the Bible agree on this notion, they are in conflict over the definition of which behaviors deserve admonishment. At the most extreme points of difference, contemporary culture may consider the rebuking endorsed by the Bible to be hatred, especially if the behavior is permissible in secular society. For example, disparaging someone based on their choice of an occupation that the Bible states is sinful could be considered hate speech which might be treated as a criminal offense." This definition actually gives us an honest definition of terms from a secular source of all places which is in fact in agreement with the foundation so far suggested. Thus it is interesting and amusing to note that whether secular men consciously acknowledge it or not, our notions of right and wrong, morals and ethics, and in particular our concepts of hate flow originally from God's authority, the Bible, despite the fact secular man denies God. At the same time, many of the fundamental underlying concepts have been progressively polluted, compromised, or otherwise redefined to justify individual secular humanistic definitions according to personal preference. The secular humanist viewpoint holds out the idea that hate is the greatest form of evil, Accordingly, in many places we have gone to great lengths to attempt to legislate against any form of supposed quote-unquote hate. In many minds, thoughts and speech which articulate alternative views, opinions, or facts that differ from that of another person or persons is considered hate, regardless of the merits of the arguments, the method of the presentation, or any other consideration. The mere fact that an opinion has been vocalized which differs from another is enough to trigger allegations of hate as being the motive. In order to avoid hate, the secular humanists would mandate that everyone pledge allegiance to absolute, unyielding tolerance as well as complete moral and academic support of every viewpoint and belief regardless of what it is. The New World Religion would in fact promote everyone doing their own thing and everyone celebrating the right to do it along with the idea that there are no absolutes, there is no ultimate authority, and there is never any moral consequences whatsoever. In the secular humanist world, no one would be allowed to exercise hate against anything except to proactively and vehemently exercise hate against anyone who disagrees with the ideology of the secular humanist. To complicate things further, the secular mindset, along with rebellion against God's will, has metastasized to the church itself. Many have compromised God's word for a myriad of reasons, including the desire to justify certain sins or to increase the palability of God's word to those in rebellion. Others are fearful or unwilling to perform the treatment necessary towards addressing the cancer of rebellion in an effort to maintain the health of the body of Christ. The second definition we find is from that of the Bible. The Greek word which translates hate is miseo. There are two definitions of this Greek word. The first is a, a malicious and unjustifiable feeling towards others. The second b, is a right feeling of aversion from what is evil. Rather than defining hate according to secular terms, we need to ask what the Bible says regarding them. For example, John chapter 15 verse 19 gives a critically important insight from God's perspective. Quote, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Unquote. What we learn from this verse, among others, is that enmity, i.e. disdain, hatred, bigotry, prejudice, intolerance, and extremism, among other things, exists as an axiomatic reality between those that are in the world, who are separated by sin and rebellion, and those who are redeemed out of the world by faith in Jesus Christ. Second, From God's revelation given in the Bible, we learn that God's ways are not man's ways. Isaiah 
chapter 55, verses 8 through 9. As a result, what we discover is that Jesus Christ himself predicted that there would be hate. So, hate, intolerance, and the other aspects of sin do exist. However, rather than the idea that Christians are the ones who are solely or unilaterally responsible for hate, we in fact discover that according to God, it is those who are in the world, as well as sin and rebellion, who are under the power of carnal hate and intolerance. Those who have been reconciled to God through faith in Jesus Christ are axiomatically polarized from being in bondage to sin to the degree that they are sanctified by the power of new life in Christ. The more one is submitted to God's will, the less they are in bondage to the dictates of their old nature. The greater the polarization becomes, the greater the animosity, disdain, and hatred increases. The more a person agrees with the secular world around them and tolerates every kind of rebellion, the more approval the world will have for that person. This human dynamic is stated nowhere better than by Jesus himself in John chapter 15, verse 19. Quote, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Unquote. Here are some additional verses which give insight regarding hate. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. Quote, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Unquote. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13, quote, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate." Unquote. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 5 quote, A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Unquote. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 8 quote, A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Unquote. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 17 Quote, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oath, for all these things I hate, saith the Lord. Unquote. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Quote, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Unquote. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Quote, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, they shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Unquote. John chapter 7, verse 7. Quote, the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Unquote. John chapter 15, verse 18. Quote, if the world hate you, ye you know it hated me before it hated you. Unquote. John chapter 15, verse 23. Quote, he that hateth me hateth my father also, unquote. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, quote, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you, unquote. This concludes part one of this series. Please join me for part two. Trust in